Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dark Souls 3. It's been quite a while since we last left off, but from what I can remember, um, we made peace with a giant that was shooting arrows in this area. At least I hope. Did we? I think we did. We'll see in a bit. Um, aside from that, I opened the other path to, that was to the right of me, I think. I think I opened it. I'm not sure. It's been a little while since I checked up on the videos, and... I don't really check up on the videos. Hold on. Be gone. That was my cat. <laughs> I saw her like um, n um, walking towards the door, so I was like, "All right, I gotta let you out." But um, um, hold on. Let's see if we made fr if we're friends with this guy who sh who's been shooting the arrows. I'm still not sure, because normally those arrows just hit those guys up front. No, I think he's friends with us now. Yeah, he should be friends with us, because that other arrow should have hit us. Or should have been aimed more towards us. Let's see. If I ever fucking go. Okay, yeah, so it's just aimed at them. So that's good. So now that we've made peace with the guy, he will no longer hit us. Like, the arrows can land next to us, but we won't take any damage, because now he's a friendly. See? I mean, I would have been pushed back if I wasn't friends with them. But now that that's out of the way, I can just traverse this area without any um, form of casualty. I think. Or reperc repercussion? Whatever. Um, aside from that, uh, I should write down what I want to talk about later on. <laughs> I should do that for um, other videos so that way I just don't like have moments of pausing. I could just like look over and just be like, oh, I wanted to talk about this. Because it it's a little awkward talking talking and then having a brief moment of pause because you want to keep you want to keep it going. You don't want like want to have a moment of just like, uh, because that's just, you know, it makes things awkward. And whenever you say, uh, during like a speech or something, then you're you're going to start losing it because you can start out pretty strong with a speech like say like you have a really good um, beginning, like a really strong beginning and then. Halfway through, you're just like, and, uh, and once you say, uh, you're going to start, like, stuttering more, and you'll just start pausing a lot more often, and just, like, you know, you start to freak out a little, because now you're starting to lose the audience. And that's what I have at least noticed during, whenever I give, um, whenever I do oral presentations to my classroom, whenever I start seeing, uh, I kind of start freaking out, I get, I get the, I get the sweats and all that, I'm just like, okay, just calm the fuck down, and then I start speaking really fast. Which is not a good thing. Because you want to be sure you're at least calm. Am I going to take on the boss? I think I might. No. No, I don't take him on yet. But I'm checking for invisible walls because sometimes... If you know Dark Souls, they have secret walls you can strike or that you can press A on. But, um... From my experiences on giving oral presentation, you want to be sure you are calm and collective. Because if you just start... If you start stuttering and then you start saying like ah and all this stuff, you're um you're gonna just, you're just gonna start pausing a lot more and it's just gonna look bad on your presentation, especially if you have like um speech classes and such, because those can fuck you over. And in the beginning, like whenever you're a child and such, it's it's not that bad. Whenever you like have mistakes and such, but like whenever you're in college and stuff and you have to give speeches. That's one of the things they'll start looking looking for is whenever you pause or stutter or speak too fast or speak too low. You got to be sure your voice is projected so that way everyone can hear you. You don't have awkward moments. And if you imply a joke, you want to be sure it's a joke that everyone will get, not just you. Because if you were to say a joke and you only laugh at it, that makes you, came, that makes you look kind of douchey. I remember in high school, there was a girl who... Um, I think she was a si friend of my sister's, I think. But, um, she, she was writing a paper, and so she was asking another friend I knew that if the paper looked good, and he's like, I don't fucking know, ask this guy, he writes stories, and I'm like, and it was pointing to me, so I was like, alright, let's see what's up. So I check out her paper, her paper was pretty good and such, or, no, I didn't check out her paper, but she was just telling me about, like, what she wanted to talk about, I'm like, okay, well, I was just telling her, like, how to, how to talk to her, and, uh, during presentation, I was just like, are there, do you have like any jokes whatsoever that can, 
help you whenever you pause, like have an awkward pause. It's like, well, yeah, but I don't think anyone would understand if it being about. I'm like, well, then you should probably take that off, because if you just have a joke that you that you only understand, it's only going to make things more awkward, because you're the only one who's going to be laughing at it, and everyone's just going to be like, what the fuck she's laughing about? That wasn't funny. And then you look more like an ass, and it just gets awkward. Hmm. Funny enough, I was actually calm during that. Anyway. Um... We're gonna currently in this video. We're gonna make our way back to the um, to the tower where that one giant was fi was firing arrows at. But we're gonna go up the elevator and head to a secret path. It's not really secret. I mean, you see it whenever you're going up there. But it's better to make a make your way to the path whenever you're going down the elevator because you won't. You're less likely to fuck up whenever it's going up. Because you can't really see it whenever you're going up, like, if you were to try to see where it is, you'll have a little harder time anticipating when to roll off, because, I don't know, I guess it's easier to see when you're ever coming down, because you're just looking down, so you can see everything around you, but if you're just looking up, then you're not sure what you're looking at half the time. Because it could be it, but it could just be like a false, um, board, or whatnot. Aside from that, I just got done playing Battlefield 4 with my brother. Had a lot of fun. At the end, uh, we... You see what I mean whenever I say, uh, I just pause and then I'm just like, nah. But, uh, anyway. I can't stop saying, uh. We were playing Conquest, and funny enough, throughout all the games, I was the commander during all of them. So, what a commander does is they can, like, you know, go around the whole map and, like, kill everyone and such. Like, kill people, kill as many as they can. But I also had the option to give objectives, meaning I could point to wherever I want to, wanted my people to go and just be like, hey, I need you to flank this, I need you to defend that, I need you to, to explode this ship and whatnot. Because in Conquest, there are at least five points you need to capture. Objective Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Foxtrot, and I can't remember E, but there are at least five five objectives you need to you need to capture so as a commander you tell people what objective you want to go to so say you capture objectives a and b and everyone's just rushing towards c well you want to be sure everyone's rushing towards c so you give the order to like say like hey i need you guys to go over to c so that way everyone has a general objective because if you're just going in there blindly it's kind of chaos because you will just have teammates running all over the place and it it might not seem like a major role, but it's act it actually has its own benefits. Because whenever you give an objective to someone, though, you'll have some people who follow it, and then like you have some people who like half follow it, meaning like they'll go to a they'll go somewhere else, but they're still heading towards the objective in a way. So like you'll have people who will go to the mid like who go in the middle way, then you have people flanking from left and right. And then you have like me and my brother who are like sniping and such or just running around with shotguns. My brother's more of a sniper. I am not I kinda I'm kinda getting the sniper concept, but not at the same time. I feel like it's just shooting a, a new tuber that can shoot really far. Because gravity plays in that game, so whenever you shoot your bullet, you'll see it start to drop. And you could increase the distance by with your sniper but people normally just fire it with a distance of a hundred millimeters and the highest you can go is a thousand but what that does is um like poking around in cells, it makes yeah. your bullets <laughs> it shoots it fires your bullets way up more than usual like it'll just arc your it'll just make your bullets it's like if you just like grab a bow and arrow and just aim up like to get the maximum distance and just fire it that's basically what your sniper is doing you could be like aiming straight at an enemy and your bullet will just like bounce up from your barrel. It's weird. But earlier, I managed to get a headshot out of random because I was just fall I was trying to snipe this guy and I couldn't get it, so I was just like, you know what, fuck this. And I tried pulling off a trick shot that didn't work. I'm more used to quick scope because of black ops. But I managed to get him out of random. Like just completely out of random. I got a headshot on him. Even when he was running too, I just anticipated where he was going. 
the bullet shot up and he ran directly towards it with his head. I'm like, holy shit, I got that. My brother's like, I saw that. That was fucking nice. And it was fun because me and my brother are just like sitting in this one in one post up high or somewhere or, or pretty far just trying to snipe one guy. And it's pretty funny because you'll see me trying to shoot him, but I don't get the concept of sniping in Battlefield, so I'll, I'll be missing horribly. And my brother is just like, got him. One shot. <laughs> On some days, I begin to doubt myself. I went up the tower, so I thought, then somehow ended up here. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I think I hear my cat. Anyhow, I'm not sure. Do you see that? That humongous beast. I'm you know, no if you take a really good look at look at it, that beast looks like the beast from Darksiders. Um, from. War's Rage Side. A rage now, form? Have you ever, have you, if any of you have ever played Darksiders, the first one, you'll know what I mean. Because if you look at War's some sense into demon him. form or whatever, he no, looks. This not. is pretty close I to him, honestly. Like this is the closest thing. it's gotten. I could and I'm wondering if this enemy is just a reference to Darksiders, because he looks so much like him, or not, and he just reminds me of him. Yeah, <laughs> had something in my tooth. Um. Yeah, like I, I was looking at this ball. I was looking at this enemy during this moment. I was just like, "What is this? What the hell?" And I was just thinking to myself, like, "How, how am I gonna fight this thing?" And then, as I got closer to it, I was like, "Oh my god, this thing looks like the Mont Wars um, Rage form in Darksiders." And you, um, you can like take a find a picture of this guy and then find the picture of Wars Rage form and. Um, you, you'll probably see a resemblance or not, but this guy looks really close to him. I mean, just look look at him from here. He looks really close. He really looks like... He looks so much like War's, um, raid. Fucking onion, bro. Um, the reason why he was sitting there, because he was anticipating how to engage this monster. And he was just like, I don't know what to do. And if anything, he wouldn't... I think if he just left and not have killed this enemy, he would have gone to engage the enemy on his own and possibly die. So my assumption is, this is the best thing you had to do. Like, this is the only thing you had to do if you want him to survive. And I don't know if he's like... I'm, I'm pretty sure he's like some type of um, tree, not tree, stone demon thing. But yeah, he's, this This was a really good fight because um, this guy was strong, powerful, but not too over OP with the health. But when if you kill him, you get a fire gem out of him because he's all fire. <laughs> Yeah, I barely, I barely survived that. <sighs> that was quite a performance. But you mustn't get in over your head. We unkindled must put our duties first. But for the moment, we've a toast to make. I don't know what that is. I don't think I ever oh, checked it, or I might have, and I just don't remember it. And I'll Long man. <laughs> I love this guy. Well, I'm going to have myself a little nap. <laughs> the only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy. I actually didn't mean the point, but I meant to bow, I think. What was I going to do with If you listen to him snore for a lo long enough, you'll get a new um, pose, at, pose, for him, which is called. And give it a sec. They really take their time with this. Sleep. <laughs> so now I can sleep, but instead. I take a toast because we are nearing the end of the video here. I'll give it another five seconds. 
But alrighty. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave a like and comment if you did. Subscribe to my channel, girl. And in the next video, we're going to head back to our bonfire because we're pretty weak and go on from there. So until then, I will see you all later.